Throughout history, great powers have risen and fallen. Some vanish suddenly, while others decline slowly over centuries. But while the collapse of one rule usually provides a vacuum for another to fill, the immediate period after the fall of an empire is one of chaos, drama, and intrigue. So... Today we're going to take a look at what happened immediately after the collapse of some major historical powers. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other powerful topics you would like to hear about. Sorry to the empires on this list, you ain't striking back. Alexander may have been great, but he wasn't smart enough to leave a will. So before his body was even cold, his generals were squabbling over his empire. Hey, we just did an episode about that. With no chosen successor and an unborn heir, his newly won empire was pretty much up for grabs to whoever was strong enough to seize it. But as it turned out, nobody was. Alexander's careful management of power meant he showed no favor to any of his generals, lest any gain the influence to challenge his own rule. As a mechanism for consolidating his own power, it worked as intended. As a clear description of the line of succession, it worked less so. The parity between the generals meant that they'd never accept the rule of another. Alexander's successors, historically known as the Theodoki, established splinter kingdoms. This led to the wars of the Theodoki, in which a lot of people died, including Alexander's son. 2300-year-old spoiler alert, the two biggest winners were Ptolemaeus and Seleucos Nicator, who both established great empires in their own right. Ptolemaeus's dynasty ruled Egypt for 300 years. The Seleucids, meanwhile, reigned over a vast domain in the Near East. Both states, however, ultimately fell to the Romans. And speaking of which... They say when in Rome, you should do as the Romans do. But they probably stopped meaning it literally in 476 CE, when the last Roman emperor was deposed by the barbarian king Odoacer. When in Rome, do like the barbarian king Odoacer just doesn't have the same ring to it. Saying should fit on a t-shirt without having to get cute with the font. What caused the once mighty Roman Empire to fall is one of the most debated questions in history. The post-Roman era is often called the Dark Ages, because it was once widely believed that without the guiding light of Roman civilization, the lands once under Roman rule regressed toward barbarism and mysticism. That interpretation, however, is largely a characterization of later writers who saw the Romans as the pinnacle of civilization. The truth isn't quite so simple. While it's true that a few key innovations were lost to the ages with the fall of Rome, but the so-called Dark Ages weren't actually all that dark. And Rome didn't exactly fall for too long. It regained its status as Europe's key city relatively quickly, only this time as the seat of the Catholic Church. At the same time, innovations in agriculture and more agreeable climate meant that even less fertile regions of Northern Europe significantly increased their food production. Islamic scholars greatly advanced the studies of engineering, mathematics, and science, while the reign of Charlemagne the Great had a profound impact on European art, culture, and literature. Maybe the new saying should be, when in Rome, get that ego in check, because it ain't all about you, sweetie. After victory in the climactic Battle of Sekigahara in 1600, Tokugawa Ieyasu established the Tokugawa Shogunate. He and his descendants would lord over Japan for the next 265 years, and they ruled with an iron fist. Imagine how long they could have ruled if they also had a Luke Cage, a Jessica Jones, and a daredevil. The harsh measures used by the Tokugawa Shogunate to keep the peace caused Japan to fall behind the rest of the world technologically. And the arrival of much larger American warships triggered a crisis of confidence. Modernizers from the domains of Satsuma and Choshu successfully deposed the Shogun in favor of Emperor Meiji. Under Meiji's reign, Japan went from a feudal agrarian state to a modern market economy in a single generation. The breakneck speed of the transition was made possible by massive fact-finding ventures abroad, and the symbolic unity the Emperor's endorsement provided for key reforms. But could he win Ohio to clinch that electoral college? There was a time when Spain owned much of the New World. But there was also a time when people thought NFTs were valuable. And as we've learned, things can change quickly. Spain's massive international empire disappeared in the blink of an eye when a series of wars broke out in South America. 
Simón Bolívar, the Venezuelan general who oversaw many of the victorious efforts against Spain, dreamed of establishing a great South American nation. By the 1890s, the Spanish Empire had been whittled down to its African holdings and a precarious reign over Cuba and the Philippines. The latter two territories would be lost in the Spanish-American War, with both countries almost immediately plunging into long and costly conflicts with the U.S. Today, the Spanish still hold a few enclaves on the North African coast in the Canary Islands. But as to the days of its globe-spanning empire, it was a big adios. The Byzantine Empire was actually just the Eastern Roman Empire, but historians hated always having to specify which Roman Empire they were talking about, so they started calling it Byzantine. Then the Holy Roman Empire came along and screwed everything up again. Sort of like the Who and the Guess Who, or whichever Paul brother is which. As fate would have it, the Byzantines outlasted their western counterpart by almost 1,000 years. The borders expanded and contracted significantly over its long life. But by the 15th century, it was reduced to little more than the lands around the great city of Constantinople. Despite that, it still took multiple attempts by the Ottomans to finally conquer it and lay the groundwork for They Might Be Giant's iconic song and accompanying Tiny Toon Adventures segment. Constantinople was sometimes called the Second Rome, as it was the seat of the Orthodox Church and had replaced Rome as the true center of Christianity. Then, with the Muslim conquests of 1453, a wave of Byzantine scholars and officials rolled into Moscow. A Byzantine princess named Sophia married Ivan III, the Grand Prince of Moscow. Great construction projects such as the Kremlin and the Dormition Cathedral were completed during Ivan's reign by architects from southern Europe. And Moscow then became the Third Rome. Unfortunately, Rome, Georgia has yet to claim the title of the Fourth Rome, despite being the biggest city in Floyd County. They used to say the sun never set on the British Empire, but that was before the sun set on the British Empire. Should have seen that one coming, I guess. And while some overseas territories are still ruled by Britain, the vast majority of the empire is long gone. Not all British colonies were ruled equally, though. Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and South Africa were effectively self-governing states on an equal legal footing with the home nations. The high number of citizens with European ancestry made the crown consider them more capable of ruling themselves, while little regard was paid to the indigenous populations of those nations. They refer to these territories as the White Dominions, because the British Empire had all the subtlety of a neutron bomb. After the Second World War, the British Empire's breakup began in earnest. Exhausted and overstretched by the conflict, Britain was simply in no position to maintain a global presence. India's long and difficult march to independence finally came to an equally troublesome end, with a 1947 partition of India, East and West Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Most of the African nations gained independence in the 1950s and 60s, but as one final stir in their colonialist tea, the departing British had the borders of many of these new nations haphazardly drawn by officials with little care for cultural and linguistic ties. Genghis Khan unified the Mongol tribes under a single banner in the 12th century. His innovative tactics, supreme mobility, and a merit-based system of promotion put the Mongols light years ahead of their opponents. Consequently, they conquered vast swaths of territory under Genghis and his chosen successor. Plus, Khan totally ravaged Ashman's sporting goods in the second half of Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Short reigns and civil wars weakened the overall authority of the Khan and saw the empire fragment into four Khanates. Though nominally the ruler of the entire empire, the authority of Genghis Khan's grandson Kublai outside of his own domains was limited. The split was formalized into four khanates upon Kublai's passing in 1294, and these separate dynasties sputtered and puttered until the Golden Horde split apart in the 15th century. Hey, what can you do? Under the Umayyad Caliphate, the Muslim conquests reached their zenith, stretching all the way from Portugal to Pakistan. But things turned to crap pretty quickly. At the Battle of the Zab, the Umayyads were vanquished by the Abbasids. In a dynasty-toppling defeat, the surviving members were lured out under promises of amnesty, only to be slain. Sort of like Lucy shattering Charlie Brown's kneecaps instead of just moving the football. Only one survivor managed to carry on the family. Abdul Rahmani, an Umayyad prince, escaped to Iberia after several years on the run. He established a new kingdom, with Cordoba as the capital. 
Over the course of some 25 years, he subjugated other Muslim rulers in the area to become the preeminent ruler in the Iberian Peninsula. His descendants ruled for another century before the caliphate fractured into several smaller kingdoms. Hey, don't caliphate the player, caliphate the game. The collapse of the USSR was decades in the making, but came rather suddenly in 1991. The immediate aftermath of the Soviet dissolution saw the formation of 15 nations, of which Russia was by far the largest and most populous. And also saw the Beatles classic, Back in the USSR, abruptly become a song about time travel. The Russian people were hopeful the fall of communism would immediately usher in a new era of freedom and blue jeans. But boy oh boy, it did not go that way. The wild 90s were a period of rampant corruption, soaring crime, and economic instability. Some robber barons grew wealthy by seizing state assets for a fraction of their true value. But many more were left unemployed and destitute by the collapse of their system. Years of savings were rendered worthless by the fluctuations of currency. As cynicism for the new order grew, President Boris Yeltsin turned to the oligarchs to ensure his re-election and prevent the communists from returning to power in 1996. The ravages of the wild 90s fostered a deep mistrust with the West, and in this climate of nationalism, Yeltsin's chosen successor, a little-known former KGB officer named Vladimir Putin, assumed control and never let go. The Ottoman Empire, which had nothing to do with footstools, was one of history's longest and most influential empires. The Ottomans rose from just one of many Turkic tribes to a Eurasian powerhouse over the course of its 700-year existence. The decline of the Ottoman Empire was lengthy, but it just might have pulled through had it not backed the wrong horse in World War I. The empire was partitioned and occupied by the victorious allies following its surrender on October 30, 1918. The severity of the Treaty of Sevres to Turkish interests ignited a further conflict. Turkish Field Marshal Mustafa Kemal Atatürk's nationalistic forces prevailed, and the Republic of Turkey, which has nothing to do with Turkeys, was established in 1923. Atatürk served as its first president and oversaw sweeping reforms to establish Turkey as a modern, secular nation. And that's why you should always try to be on the right side of a world war. So what do you think? Which of these world powers suffered the biggest fall? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our Weird History.